Hey guys and gals, how we doing? I always forget about the lady viewers, but I know you're out there because I got one I'm trying to help right now. She's new to the lease purchase program. I'm not going to sell her out and give her your name, you bunch of weirdos. But she found her way out to Fallon, Nevada. She obviously, well, she said she wished she'd have watched my videos, some of them, before she went out there because she wouldn't be out there. But it is what it is. Um, which brings me to what we're going to talk about in the news. I've spent a lot of time on the load board trying to help her out on the spot market, which is always good to do. It's a good reminder of just how ugly it is on the spot market and why I am thankful I am leased on to a good company and not playing that game. So um, I think that's all we're going to do in the news. And then we'll do the numbers. This week was... This week is one of those weeks I wish I'd have just stayed in bed. Everything kind of fell apart on me, but that's trucking. It happens. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, nothing new. I'm not going to do the Ford Chevy fight. I've done videos on why I think being leased is much better than running under your own authority uh, on the spot market. Uh, so, let's, let's take a look at some spot market loads. Uh, now that I can actually drop these in here learning little by little how to do this video stuff my kids helping me so uh i got a few things to show you guys first we'll look out west here um where this young lady is uh show you what i'm seeing out there um so i guess we will start with this uh sparks which is over by her to denver load i'll put it in right here all right should be in there was that two thousand um, two thousand dollars, and I didn't write the mileage term. I think it was a thousand fifty miles. You do the math on that. Buck ninety a mile. A buck ninety a mile for flatbed stuff. That's more likely than not uh, lumber or uh, OSB that you got a tarp and run over a bunch of mountains for a dollar ninety a mile. No, thank you. And that. Let's look at this here. This is what I hate about brokers. It's a bunch of click and paste. And they sell themselves out. They show you what thieves they are. So let me drop this in here, right here. Okay, that should be up there. Look at this, Sparks to Pueblo. You got three brokers here sorry to sell the same load. One's got it there, what? 2,900, then 3,100, then 3,200. Oh, geez, I wonder which one I should take. Come on, man. It doesn't matter. You know that load's probably paying 3500 and they're stealing. One's trying to steal more than the others. Good night. So, now this next thing I got here, this is really hard for me to do. It's hard to compare CRST freight to the spot market because they're two different things. you got to remember, the bulk majority of our freight is customer direct contract freight. A lot of I know I mentioned it in videos, but CRST actually stands for Cedar Rapids Steel Transport. They've been in the flatbed business for over a hundred years. Of course, you know them mostly for their dry vans because they grew into a big ginormous dry van business. They still have a thousand of us owner operators, lease purchase guys pulling skateboards, but they've shifted from their beginnings to a a dry van uh, door swingers, but. They've been around a long, long time. These agents have been around a long, long time. So for me to pull loads from the same area and show you is very hard to do because we don't deal in a lot of op loads that are open to brokers. But I did find a couple here. So I guess I just found one. Uh, did I find one or two? Just one, I guess. I didn't put a lot of time into this. Harder to do than you think, but... Um, First of all, th this is the bottom of the barrel on the CRST board, okay? This is not something we want to do on a regular basis. But just to show you how they give you the all-in versus the broker trying to steal as much as possible, I'll drop this load in here. All right. From Dyersburg to Garner, Georgia. I don't know. It says on there. Um, we got it on the board for $2,094. The uh, old Joker brokers have got it for eighteen hundred bucks, three hundred dollars less right off the bat. So there you go. I've tried to tell you guys, CRST does not make money unless you make money. The more, and that's probably the all-in for that load. So that broker is stealing three hundred. He's trying to make his cut. 
you might be able to call and argue back and forth. He ain't going to give you no more than 294. He ain't going to give you that much. It's going to be less because he has to make something. But CRST is giving you the all in because this agent gets 7% of that 2094. I did not open it. I'm not going to open the uh, CRST board and give you our con so it would show the contact for that agent. I'm not going to do that. The spot market, uh, I don't remember which one. It's probably Coyote Logistics or TQL, whoever you've seen it. it, it that's no, every, anybody can get that number. But our agent's numbers are not out there for the general public. So that's all I got in news. Um, that's it, man. I'm going to go ahead and add up these numbers. And I got a little video to fill in here. What is it? Oh, my wife mowing the yard, I think it was. <laughs> Talking about how to get a good woman or something. You watch that and laugh at me, I guess. And I'll run these numbers. There ain't much to it. This is just another week of slacking off and things falling apart. Um, but we are loaded for Detroit. Today is Saturday. I'm going to leave tomorrow. So we should get some uh, should get something accomplished next week since we're starting early on Sunday. So I'll watch that, and I'll be back in a minute. See you, bye. I don't know where I'll use this clip, but here's some advice for you. Get your wife young, 21 max. Any older than that, pretty hard to train them. But uh, there she comes. Keeping that eight acres mowed up for me. Told her I was real busy with the truck. Better act like I'm working. She's close to the window. <laughs> That's, I better do a couple things. She loves mowing the grass though. She gets on that big mower and just goes to town. She's got her earbuds in, listening to her uh, worship music and casting crowns. Calls it mama time. All right getting a little binding going on so I need to grease the fifth wheel I got to do that at least once every two or three weeks check everything out wash the truck get it all done today we'll have tomorrow off and then I got to leave Sunday mid morning noon somewhere I ain't in a big hurry about a nine hour run to Detroit 10 with a break and fuel so noon get up there at 10 o'clock at night that's good enough for me all right, y'all. God bless you. Maybe I'll put this in the money and news to fill time or something. We'll see you then. All right. Bye now. All right. Hopefully my wife don't watch that. I'll probably be in trouble. We're back with a bunch of nothing here. If you watched last week's video, I, this is another thing I don't... You can only plan so far out because things happen. But I had a load... I had a whole week planned out. I was going up to Rockford, which I did, and then I had a load going down to Springfield and then a nice little hop from Springfield over uh, to Memphis. Then I would reload for the load I have now. Well, when I called on that load to Springfield out of Summit, Illinois, text message, um, last week, let me see if I can get these dates right. It was going to pick up Tuesday and deliver Thursday. It's like, so I asked the... Uh, lady in customer service, what, 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 that's 500 miles. What, what are you doing? She goes, yeah, I don't know. They've been given lots of times because guys have been struggling to get there. I'm like, what, 500 miles? That's like seven hours. But, you know, there are flip-flops even in the flatbed world. So I said, well, uh, I could pick it up Wednesday, deliver it Thursday. She said, okay, fine. Somehow that didn't get put in the system. The right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing, so they thought I was supposed to be there Tuesday, not Wednesday. So they gave it to another driver, but somehow neglected to tell me or talk to me or call me or ask me, how come you're not there? Nothing. Or talk to the lady that had it assigned to me. Nothing. It was a complete breakdown in communication. One of the problems with our customer service doing these loads sometimes is too many hands in the pot. You're not going to find this happening when you deal with our agents. But anyways, supposed to get some Tanu pay for that. Um, I don't know what it'll be. It better be at least 100, 200 bucks because when I got to Owens Corning and checked in, the guy called me a few minutes later and said, hey, that load was picked up Tuesday or yesterday. And there I was scrambling at one in the afternoon. Uh, I called all the agents. They had nothing for that day. 
said they'd get me something tomorrow. So I got on the load board. Me, I got on the load board. Can you believe it? I don't get on the load board much. That's why you never rule it out. I found a wild card load from an agent out of Texas with a load out of Portage going to one of her customers in Kentucky. Now that does happen. Agents not necessarily out of the Chicago area will get loads out of Chicago for their customers. So you'll never rule out the load board completely. Anyways, I told you all that just to tell you my whole week fell apart and all I did was go up and come right back. I did reload. I'm loaded now for Detroit. So this week is uh, kind of like a whatever flip-flop week. And last week, I just didn't want to go out till Tuesday. So last week was kind of a flip-flop week. So, hey, it is what it is. I'm a flip-flop, I guess. Uh, maybe this next week I'll run a little harder for you guys. But remember, I'm older, debt-free. I'm not very motivated sometimes, but let's get to it. Uh, Blyville to Rockford, Illinois, paid me $1,525.33, oh, yeah, $1, $2.98, a loaded mile on 511 miles. It was two coils. Here's a picture or two of them. I'll just drop them in there as I talk. I'm going to try to do this more for you, uh, just something to add to the video. Um, from there, I... Couldn't do anything. I kind of got messed up, so I did 128 miles down over to Portage, Indiana. Picked up one coil going to Paducah. I actually picked that up and Thursday morning in Portage, Indiana, and delivered it Thursday afternoon in Paducah. So it paid me a quick little, like an eight-hour day, really. Uh, load and unload, um, plus 382 miles, but it's a pretty easy day. Paid me $867. Uh, for 227, not very good, man. It was a scramble load, not something I'd normally take. But when you got to do what you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. Because I already had, I got to got to get back to Blyville. I'd already committed to this next load I'm on, so we had to do what we had to do. Um, so that brings my week's total. That's all I did, guys. I do not have a picture of that load um, because I was busy that day. I just wanted to get it picked up, get down here, get it unloaded. Um, I do have a picture. And I did a video on this here. I'll show you this. Here's the load I just picked up in Blyville, single coil. Um, that, this coil weighs 44,000. Those two coils before weighed like 43,000 or something. They're pretty light, 42 maybe even. Uh, so let's get to the numbers. That brings my week total for the week on two whole run loads of only 893 total miles, 1,020. One, 893 loaded miles, 1,021, including that deadhead, $2,392.33. My cost, don't have many costs because I didn't do much, didn't have to pay for reserve parking, didn't get the truck wash, uh, but I always have my 375 a week to CRST for my 225 trailer rent, base plates, quail comb, bobtail insurance, yada, 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 all that stuff. Only spent $731.85 on fuel before discounts. Won't be much discounts. 20, 25 bucks once it comes through the system. And then on the credit card, I had $55 uh, this week for QuickBooks. That's all I had, no other charges. Dropped my net down for a two to three day work week, uh, $1,230.48. So we're still profitable, I'll take it. Um, Still clearing 1200 uh, bucks a week. It's better than McDonald's, so we're doing all right. A shout out again, uh, Dana O, for a referral bonus. That's his second one. A Timothy S, I believe that's his second one. So I got $1,000 in referral bonuses this week. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate those. Bringing my total net to the week for 223048. If you guys want to put me down for a referral bonus and you come over, that will always be appreciated. I don't ask you to do it but if you want to do it great here's my driver id and my truck number there you go write those down if you can't remember them call or email me and i'll give them to you or just tell your recruiter the guy from missouri that makes youtube videos everybody pretty much knows me they'll figure it out so let's do what else oh the cost per mile we always do that this is a joke on this week but anyways loaded miles $2.67.8 cents per mile, all miles $2.34.3 cents miles. Uh, my cost per mile, you add the $3.75 down to the $55, gives me $1.13.7 cost per mile, minus that from the all miles all in at $2.34.3. 
gives me a net profit of a dollar twenty point six miles. So a dollar twenty, basically a dollar twenty per mile. But I'm trying to do the six. It's actually six four three three or something like that. As you guys want, you guys are following closely. I like that, but you want to add it up and it wants to equal this twelve thirty forty eight net. Well, there you go, one twenty six times whatever mileage I had, 1021 comes out to basically, I think it's 1231 something. I don't know. I didn't put all the numbers in, but there you go. All right, that's it. God bless you guys. And maybe next week I'll uh, actually work a little bit to show you some better numbers. Whew, I'm tired. I got to go out. I'm waiting for the heat to calm down because they had a big old branch off one of our oak trees fall down. So I got to go clean that up before I call it a day. And then we're heading out about 10 in the morning, and we're going to be riding and guiding, heading up to Detroit, about a nine and a half, 10 hours, 10, 11 hours of time I stop and get fuel. So I probably will leave here about 10, 11 in the morning, get up there at 10 at night or so, and sleep. And then we will unload and go on the next adventure. I don't know yet. Lori didn't commit anything to me coming out of Detroit yet, but she'll call me in the morning, Monday morning. All right, you guys. Talk to you next time. See you. Bye.